Welcome to Master the FCS, a focused question bank built to help future surgeons prepare with confidence. In the next few minutes, I'll walk you through the question bank's study mode, and we will do a few questions and explore a few features. Let's jump right into the question bank page. You will see two modes of quizzes, study mode and exam mode. In study mode, you get immediate feedback of your answer selections in an untimed environment, in exam mode, you are in an exam-like environment where feedback is given at the end of the time session. You may choose to bookmark some questions so you can come review them later before submitting your session. On the quiz setup page, you are able to switch between study mode and exam mode settings. For this demo, we'll start by selecting the subjects and then the categories within the subjects that we would like to review. Let's start with anatomy and choose any category. Let's do the same for physiology and pathology. Then let's choose the number of questions we would like to review. We can choose from 5, 10, 20, 30, and even 50 questions in study mode. Let's select 5. You can toggle the new questions only button if you like. For now, let's keep it off. Let's start the quiz. Great, let's go through these questions. The first question reads, during pelvic exenteration, the obturator nerve is identified. Its function includes A, innervation of piriformis, B, supply to gluteal skin, C, innervation of thigh adductors, D, control of obturator internus, E, sensory to perineum. Great. We got that one correct. And there's the explanation. Let's move on to the next question. A 55-year-old post-hemicolectomy develops anasarca. Which factor does it not contribute to edema? A, albumin 1.8 grams per deciliter. B, lymph node dissection. C, TNF alpha mediated capillary leak. D, intravenous albumin 25% infusion. E, histamine release from mast cells. Hmm. I think it's D, but C also looks like it might be an option. I can't remember coming across TNF-alpha in the physiology of edema. Let's skip this one and come back to it later. The third question reads, a 55-year-old diabetic develops chest pain during elective cholecystectomy. ST elevation is noted on intraoperative monitoring. Which biomarker should be trended postoperatively? A, troponin I. B, B, N, P, C, myoglobin, D, L, D, H, E, C, K, M, B. This one is a little tricky. I'll go for E. Ugh, missed it. Let's quickly look at the correct answer justification and the distractor analysis. Troponin I, option A, is critical. Due to near-absolute cardiac specificity and high sensitivity for myocardial necrosis. Serial measurements, zero, three, six hours, confirm MI diagnosis and quantify injury magnitude, even when ST changes resolve. The distractor analysis says BNP, option B, reflects heart failure, not acute injury. Myoglobin, option C, rises early, but lacks cardiac specificity. LDH, option D, and CKMB, option E, are obsolete. Troponin supersedes them in sensitivity and specificity. Let's type a question to the AI assistant. I thought CKMB was the best marker to diagnose reinfarction in hospitalized patients. Why is it wrong here? Let's go through the response. Okay, it looks like it's given me a solid response with guidelines and recommendations. Let's create a flashcard from this response. Let's move on to the next question. 
Inferior gluteal nerve transection during posterior hip approach affects which movement? A. Hip abduction. B. Hip external rotation. C. Thigh extension. D. Knee flexion. E. Ankle plantar flexion. Thigh extension. Should be the answer here. Let's choose option C. Correct. Great. Let's go. The last question reads, a 55-year-old on furosemide has potassium 2.8 milliequivalents per liter. What symptom occurs? A. Peaked T waves. B. Prolonged QT. C. Muscle weakness. D. Tetany. E. Bradycardia. Hmm. Let's see. A bit tricky. I think it's between C and D. I need a bit more time to think. For now, let's get back to the question we didn't answer earlier. Let's click on the square grid right here to get the questions map. Based on the key, it's question two that's unanswered. Hmm, again, I still think it's option C over option D. I can't remember coming across TNF alpha in the physiology of edema. Let's choose C. Oh damn, I probably should have stuck with my first instinct. Let's see where I went wrong. Let's go through the explanation carefully. Actually, let's probe further. Let's ask the AI assistant to clarify and hone down on the aspects I missed. Let's browse through the response. Okay, it looks like it's given me a comprehensive response with relevant citations. Let's create a flashcard from this response. Looks good. It's saved and added to our deck. Let's go back to the last question. Hmm. Okay, so my deductions are that tetany has to do with calcium. So based on the options, option C, muscle weakness, should be the correct answer. Great. It's correct. Okay, so we are done. Let's submit. There's our mark and a nice motivational text. Let's click Review Progress. Now we can see an overview of our progress, as well as the score distribution curve indicating how we are performing against other users. You'll also see your recent activity on this page, which will show your last five sessions. Your journey to fellowship success deserves a tool built for you. At Master the FCS, we know that exam prep is about strategy as much as knowledge. That's why we built topic-specific practice questions, performance analytics, and real exam-level challenges into the platform to help you refine your approach with each step and train at or above exam level. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Dominate the boards and master the FCS. And as always, happy studying from the master of the FCS team.